In this lecture, we will talk about safety factors that normally prevent edema or the factors which will not allow edema to occur. So far, in the last few lectures, we have been discussing the causes of edema. And we discussed that there are multiple causes of edema which were broadly classified into four main groups. Edema due to increased capillary pressure, I mean, edema due to decreased plasma protein, due to increased capillary per permeability and blockage of lymph return. Now, these were the uh, causes of edema and some of the causes were discussed in detail. Now, we will discuss the safety factors, the factors which will prevent edema or which will not allow the edema to occur. Now, there are three main safety factors which will not normally allow the edema to occur or which will prevent edema. Now, the first factor is low compliance of interstitium in negative interstitial fluid pressure range. The second factor is ability of lymph flow to increase 10 to 50 fold. And third factor is the wash down, wash down of interstitial fluid protein concentration. Now, we will discuss the first factor in detail in this lecture. And in the, we will discuss the remaining factors in the coming lectures. Now, how the body is basically trying to prevent edema or the safety factors which normally will prevent edema. So, the first factor is the low compliance of interstitium in negative interstitial fluid pressure range. Normally, when the interstitial fluid pressure is in the negative range, it will have, the, the interstitium will have low compliance. Now, we will discuss this in detail with the help of this graph and with the help of the factors which basically are in, responsible for capillary filtration. To understand the low compliance of interstitium in negative interstitial fluid pressure range, we need to discuss the factors that can increase the capillary filtration range. Now, the filtration from the capillary, we have discussed this uh, thing multiple times that blood is coming from the heart through the aorta, through the arteries, through the, through the arterioles and finally at the level of capillaries, filtration is occur. Fluid is going out, plasma is going out and is coming in. So, at the capillary level, there are four main factors. Capillary hydrostatic pressure is pushing the fluid, the plasma out into the interstitium. This is the interstitium, this is the capillary. The interstitial fluid pressure is basically trying to push the fluid into the capillary. Plasma colloid osmotic pressure is basically trying to pull the fluid into the capillary and interstitial fluid colloid osmotic pressure is basically trying to pull the fluid out of the capillary into the interstitium. Now, our low, we will talk about the low compliance of interstitium in negative interstitial fluid pressure range and this is the topic, interstitial fluid pressure. Now, we know that the capillary hydrostatic pressure is trying to push the fluid out and the interstitial fluid pressure is trying to push the fluid in. Normally, the interstitial fluid pressure is in the negative range. It is in the negative range. It sometimes goes into the positive range as well. But when it is in the negative range, this pressure, the interstitial fluid pressure, which basically is trying to prevent edema, when this pressure is in the negative range, the compliance of the interstitium is very low. The compliance of the interstitium is very low. So, the low compliance of interstitium in negative interstitial fluid pressure range. Now we will basically discuss it with the help of this graph. We will understand it better. So this is the first safety factor. See, this is the interstitial free fluid pressure. This is the interstitial free fluid pressure or the interstitial fluid pressure. So we have plotted the interstitial fluid pressure on the x-axis and we have the interstitial fluid volume, the interstitial fluid volume on y-axis. The interstitial fluid volume basically is the volume of fluid in the interstitium. The volume of fluid in the interstitium, it has been uh, plotted on the y-axis and the pressure, the interstitial fluid pressure is plotted on the x-axis. Now we see when this, when this interstitial fluid pressure, when it is in the negative range, when it is in the negative range, the compliance, the compliance or the allowance or the ability of the interstitium to allow the fluid to collect in the interstitium is very low. This is basically low compliance. It simply means when this pressure, when the interstitial fluid pressure, when this pressure, interstitial fluid pressure, when it is in the negative range, when it is in the negative range, it will not allow a lot of fluid to collect in the interstitium. This pressure will not allow a lot of fluid to collect in the interstitium outside this capillary, outside this capillary, only in the negative region. So see, normally it is around minus three. This is the uh, range in the minus 3, this is the normal limit of the uh, interstitial fluid pressure. Now, this interstitial fluid pressure, it will not normally allow a lot of fluid to collect. So, you see, in the negative range, in the negative range, if fluid starts coming into the interstitium, if fluid starts coming into the interstitium, the volume of fluid, the volume of fluid, now here we see the, the volume of fluid has been plotted on the y-axis. The volume of fluid here is not increasing that much. The volume of fluid is not increasing that much, rather the volume remains low because this is a low compliance range. In this range, when the interstitial fluid pressure, when this interstitial fluid pressure, when it is in the negative range, it is not allowing a lot of fluid to collect in the interstitium because in the negative range, in the negative range, due to small amount of volume, due to small amount of volume, the, the capillary, the interstitial fluid pressure, 
the interstitial fluid pressure increases. It increases from like minus 4, minus 3, minus 2, minus 0. The pressure increase is very high. The increase in pressure, the increase in pressure in low compliance region with small addition of extra volume is very high. But the increase in volume, the increase in volume is not that much high. Once the interstitial fluid pressure has reached this zero mark, once the interstitial fluid pressure has reached this zero mark, this mark. Now, a, even a slight addition of the volume, a slight addition of fluid in the interstitium will increase, it will increase the volume, it will increase the volume tremendously, it will increase the volume tremendously without increasing the interstitial fluid pressure that much. So, you have to understand that in the low compliance region, in the negative region, when the interstitial fluid pressure, when this pressure is in the negative range, suppose when this is minus 3 for example, in this range, with addition of volume, with addition of further volume, with addition of further fluid in the interstitium, change in the interstitial fluid pressure occur. Change occurs in the interstitial fluid pressure. For example, at this level, the volume was 12 liter. So even a small increase in volume from 12 to around this level 13 or 14, even with small addition, a small increase in the volume, the pressure has increased from like minus 4 to 0. With small increase in the volume, with small addition, with addition of small amount of fluid, the pressure has increased from like minus 4 to 0. But the volume, the volume, the volume has changed only slightly like from this level to only this level. But once it has, once this pressure, once this pressure has come out of the negative zone and it has entered the positive zone, once it is out of the negative zone and it is in the positive zone, then even a small addition of fluid, even a small amount of volume, addition of a little increase in the volume in the extracellular fluid will tremendously increase the volume in the interstitium. It will increase the interstitium uh, fluid uh, or the volume of the interstitium. But the pressure at this range, for example, from this level up to this level, there is a big increase. There is a big increase in the volume. There is a big increase in the volume from like 12 liters to 40 liters. But there is only a small increase in pressure. There is a small increase in pressure from zero to only two millimeter of mercury. But in the negative zone, in the negative zone, in the low compliance region, there is a big increase, for example, like from minus, minus 4 to around 0. The increase in interstitial fluid pressure is high from this region to this region. But the change in the volume is very low, only this much change. And now after entering the positive range, in the positive range, there is minimal change in the pressure. There is minimal change in the interstitial fluid pressure, but there is a big change in the volume. So in the positive range, once the interstitial fluid pressure has entered the positive range, the amount of volume, the capacity of the interstitium to allow extra fluid in the interstitium increases tremendously. You can watch this uh, lecture again and you will understand it that, that once this pressure comes out from the negative zone into the positive zone, then the ability of the interstitium to allow more fluid increases and that is known as the high compliance zone. That is the high compliance zone where the volume increases tremendously but the pressure is not that much increasing. And in the low compliance region, the pressure is increasing tremendously without much increase in the volume. Now why this thing is occurring? It is occurring because that while this interstitial fluid pressure is in the negative zone due to its increase due to increase in this pressure it will oppose any movement of fluid coming out of the capillary so while the, this pressure is in the negative zone any any increase any increase in the interstitial fluid volume will increase this pressure and due to increase in this pressure it will oppose the movement of volume from the capillary into the interstitium now once it has entered into the positive zone once it has entered the positive zone then with the further increase in fluid in the interstitium with further oozing out of fluid from the capillary into the interstitium there will be no further increase in the interstitial fluid pressure there will be no further increase and this pressure will not be able to prevent further movement of fluid from capillary into the interstitium and fluid will keep on collecting in the interstitium so to summarize it when the in this uh, the first safety factor the first safety factor that normally prevents edema is the low compliance of interstitium a low compliance of the interstitium in the negative interstitial fluid pressure range when the interstitial fluid pressure when this interstitial fluid pressure is in the negative range a small increase in volume will will bring a big change in the interstitial fluid pressure and that big change will prevent the further movement of fluid from capillary into the interstitium so it will prevent edema once it has reached the zero level from minus 3 to zero level then with further increase in uh, fluid, with further increase in volume of the interstitium, there will be no further increase in the interstitial fluid pressure. Rather, there will be a big increase in the interstitial fluid volume. So, the compliance of the interstitium is low. 
in the negative interstitial fluid pressure range and it is high in the positive interstitial fluid pressure range and that safety that is the first safety factor that normally prevents edema from occurring and this safety factor normally is around minus 3 mm of mercury when we further discuss the other safety factors the ability of the lymph flow to increase so much and the wash down of interstitial fluid protein we will see that these safety factors also have some value but the value of the low compliance in negative zone is is around uh, is around 3 is around 3 mm of mercury so that's all about the uh, first safety factors that uh, first safety factor that normally prevent edema and how uh, basically the the consistency or the uh, the structure of the interstitium basically helps in this low compliance why this is uh, basically uh, low compliant why the interstitium is low uh, is not very much compliant why it is not allowing volume then we will dis we will discuss this thing in detail in the next lecture and after that we will discuss in detail the other safety factors thanks a lot for watching the video